All right, hey guys, like the slide says, I'm Keith. Uh, I work at PwC in their cyber threat intelligence team. I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. I spend most of my time analyzing malware and tracking threat actors, which is exactly what this presentation is all about. So in this presentation, I'm going to go through a few things. So firstly, I'm going to introdu introduce the idea of threat actors, a few key terms that you might hear throughout the presentation, define like why we do track threat actors, a little bit of background on what I did and my methods, and using a real threat actor as an example, and then going through the methods of tracking, how you can identify patterns and what sort of patterns that I identified, and then a few other tips that I learned in my first experience when I was tracking threat actors. And then we'll end with questions if we've got some time. So right, uh, starting off, what do I mean by a threat actor? And when I say threat actor, I'm essentially saying any bad person up to no good. So normally when people say this, they're referring to maybe cyber criminal gangs or nation state hacking groups, which are also known as APTs or advanced persistent threats. Um, I've also done a little artist rendition of what the threats are like nowadays, but might not be accurate. So uh, the threat actor that I tracked as part of this was called Dark Caracal. Um, they had quite a lot of activity last year, and they were the subjects of a really interesting report by Lookout and EFF. So if you want some more details about this threat actor, like their background, attribution, and who, they, who they were targeting, then check out that report. But for this, I'm just going to kind of use them as a backdrop and show how you can track threat actors by tra tracking them. So uh, why track threat actors? So basically, the scenario is if you get an email through in your organization, you get a phishing email, then somebody opens it, and now you've got their malware running on your system. The first things you kind of want to know is who is behind this, uh, who are their likely targets, and cheers. <laughs> Who are they like likely targets, and what are the common sort of techniques that you can look out for? And who, do they have any repeating behaviors that you can look out for and then make sure that you stop in their tracks? So also the main point about threat actor tracking is the fact that we want to have fun, because cybersecurity is all about fun. So that's another reason to do it. So let's get tracking. So the scenario was that around June 2017, we were alerted of an email. That isn't the actual email right there. That's just kind of a, an idea of what the email looks like because all phishing emails essentially look like this. But the main points in that email were that there was a... a so the from address was a Jessica Karam at maxwellgroup.ae and also had an Excel document attachment. <laughs> so those are the main two things that we want to focus on here. And if we want to know more information about this threat actor, I think the best place to start is by looking at that Excel document and finding some things about it. The quickest way to get more information out of this document is to maybe run it in a sandbox or a virtual machine, which is, which is what I did in that situation. So I've got a safe environment set up where I've got the virtual machine that's disconnected from anything I care about. I spin that up and I run the Excel document inside there. And like a lot of common phishing documents, it comes up with a warning to enable macros. So I do that, I enable macros, track all the activity that's going on, and then see that it drops out an executable file, which I put the hash there at the bottom there. And once this executable file was dropped out, it started to connect out to the command and control server of the threat actor. And I pulled out a little bit of their communication there. So you can use Wireshark to get this out, and it's quite basic to do. And you'll be able to find a few more key bits of information. So there we've got a URL at the top there, where it goes to inu.get.php. We've also got the domain name that it's connecting out to, which is ankmax.com. Also, weirdly, when the command and control server of the threat actor replied, it sent a little message at the bottom saying, OK, Bandukex 32424, which is also quite interesting. And we're starting to get an idea of these unique behaviors that this threat actor has. So I note them down. And it's a good idea to note these down as you're going. So another quick way to get information out of a, out of a file is to check the metadata. So if in an executable file, you can just, in Windows, right-click it and look at the information. And in the case that I was talking about, I look at it, and I find that it's signed this time to a, an actual person's name, this Johannes Krutov on the, on the right here, on the left even. And so I look at that, and I think, well, that's quite interesting. That's a person's name. Probably not a real person, but interesting all the same. And then looking at the document as well, the metadata there shows that it had the last author of Ali, and also in the strings of the file. 
And these are like little messages that are embedded inside an executable that you'll be able to pull out. You can also find, again, that domain, that actmax.com. So that after doing these two quick steps, that's where you just kind of pause and, and do a stock take and find out what have we got now. So in that case, we've got two files. We have the Excel document and the, uh, ex uh, the executable. We've got an email, Jessica Karam. We've also got a domain, ankmax.com, a URL, and also some miscellaneous strings. So like I showed you earlier in the Wireshark little shot of a HTTP request, we saw that OK X. And also in the strings of the file, there was a debug path. And debug paths are being little remnants of where the threat actor might have compiled their malware. We've seen that there's this file, this uh, folder here with dpackup2903-2014. So that's also quite unique. So that's quite interesting. So we pull that one out. And then we've got two names so far, uh, three names even. So we've got the Jessica Karam that was in the initial email, <laughs> Johannes Krutoff that was signing it, interesting, and then the Alia that's popped up a few times as well. So then you ask yourself which of these that we noted down are useful for tracking threat actors. Um, the hint is really all of them because they're all kind of unique indicators of this threat actor and things we can use to track them on. Uh, also a good tip is to send these to your security team or your SOC or something like that so that they can get these all blocked and they can look out for them in the future so that if you have been hit by this threat actor then you make sure that you're shutting down any activity from now on. But once you've done that we can get back to the fun stuff and start to find out a bit more. The best, best way to do that is to search it on Google or something like that. Just uh, throw in some of the strings that we saw. So like this OK Banduk X, we can throw that in and already we can see two links at the top there for sandboxes and then another at the bottom of another sandbox. So we can actually open those up and see other samples of that malware running again in a different context. Also in hybrid analysis, you can open this up and download the file. So again, you can continue this little snowball effect. And then on the right, also, if you, I also searched for the D backup path of that, that, fold, that uh, folder path we saw earlier. So that's interesting, because we've already got another few other sandboxes that people have, have uh, thrown this malware sample into. And again, like I say, you can go into hybrid analysis, look at the indicators there, or even download the file itself and run it in your own environment. So that's interesting, because we've got more samples, possibly of the same threat actor, but more likely just the same piece of malware. Uh, another interesting part that I found there was that this D backup path also had, again, I've highlighted there, the name Alley, which has popped up twice now. So that's quite interesting. You're starting to see a little bit of patterns in the malware, which is quite cool. So then another way you can find out a bit more information about it is to resolve these domains. So domains can be resolved into IP addresses, and then you can also use other services, such as uh, Passive Total, or I think it's called a Risk IQ now, you can use to see the history of domains and where they've been pointing to. So in this example at the top, Ankmax was pointing to that IP address, but we also see the history of the IP addresses as well. So we've gone from one thing and then to the next thing, and then we're starting to find more that might be connected to this threat actor. So once you've got all these things, it's always good to keep a track of what you've got. So the best thing to do here is map it out. I find it easier if I can visibly see what I've got so far. So everything I've talked about so far, I've mapped out there on the right. I've done that in Multigo, but there's other services you can use as well. So CMAP Tools is a good open source one that you can use. Um, you could also do it in PowerPoint, and even MS Paint if you're really feeling dangerous. And uh, that'd be quite an interesting task if someone can map out the threat actors infrastructure in MS Paint. I'd like to see it, and I might buy you a drink, because that'd be impressive. But once you've got this, you want to find out more, and the best way to find out a bit more about all of this is to take what you've got and then pivot onto more stuff. There's a picture of some people pivoting there. So yeah, so, what, so how can you pivot and what are things to pivot on? So like I showed you earlier, domains into IPs. These IPs can be, then be turned to hashes using services like Passive Total does a bit of that. And also if you're lucky enough to have the paid version of Virus Total, which maybe some people might, you can also find more hashes that way. Like I showed you these unique strings that we found, like the string in the in the HTTP request and the debug paths, you can just do web searches for these and find other samples. Also for email addresses and those signer names, those unique names that we saw earlier, you can do a web search for that and find more information as well. And as you're doing this, obviously continue to keep track of these indicators in Multigo or your, your mapping software of some sort, and just keep the snowball effect going and you eventually get 
so many different indicators all mapping together. You'll have an entire graph, and you would start to feel exactly like this, and you don't know what's going on anymore. So I, when I was doing this, I was going to get into that point because I was finding so many samples and everything was just connected that I kind of found that I wasn't figuring out very much. So in that point, I, at that point, the best thing to do for me was just have a cup of tea, sit down, and kind of mull it over and, and analyze it in your head and, and, yeah, yeah, and find out what's going on. So, but at that point as well, it kind of makes you feel good because you've gone from two things you have initially to a big web of stuff. But like I say, sit back, look at it, and kind of analyze it in your head, and you'll start to figure some stuff out. So some of the patterns that I saw after, after doing all this were quite interesting, and it's, it's quite cool. So one of the first things was uh, that, remember the two, 2017 uh, email that we saw earlier? It had a Jessica Karam. And then going back, I was finding more samples of malware. I found that, again, there was another malware sample, same sample, but older, from 2014 was signed by the same name, Jessica Karam, which is quite interesting, they're a bit weird, so they're, they're either repeating names or they're uninventive or what, I'm, I'm not really sure. So that was interesting. So another example is, what, is that this alley kept popping up again quite, quite a few times. So I did a web search for the malware a few times and I found um, a website of a hacking group that was selling malware, the exact malware that I'd been analyzing being sold by this guy called Prince Ali, which was interesting, and it makes sense, because if he's producing the software, then of course his uh, folder structure might be in the malware itself. But also interesting that in the document we saw earlier was also had his author name in it, which seems a bit strange, because it could mean that not only has he just produced a piece of malware, he might be producing a document used for phishing as well, so he might be carrying out phishing attacks or something like that, so it could be that he's not just so the threat actor might not just be using this guy's malware, it might be using him to create entire campaigns for him, possibly. So once you've got this and you want to wrap up and start to track the threat actor into the future, then just um, establish a few methods that you can track them behind the scenes for you automatically. So things you can use for this are Yara rules. You can also set up uh, network signatures. If you want to know more about this stuff, Google it or talk to me afterwards. Um, there's a lot to talk, to talk about in a lot of these things. Also, DNS alerts are good because it means you can either set these up on your own or there'll be a service on the internet to do it where whenever a domain changes to a different IP, you know about it. You can also set up Google search alerts as well. So for the strings we saw earlier and these unique names that seem to be repeating, set up a search alert for that and then if a new sample comes up, then you'll know about it straight away. And just keep checking up often. So little tips and things I wish I'd done when I started is that you've got to automate the boring tasks. At the, at the start, I was doing this all manually, throwing it into virtual machines. Um, but automatic sandboxes can do this quite quickly. And also scripts can be used to pull out the certificate information as well. So just work on automating it and making it easier for itself. And also ask around. So like I said at the start, there was a report that was released about this at the same time as I was tracking it. So it would have been nice to have connected with the people who are researching it ahead of time, and we could have compared notes and stuff like that. So that's, that's quite interesting. So then a lot of the time when you're doing this, you won't realize that it's quite right, widespread. You might be looking at all this and thinking, oh, why is no one looking at it, when really they are just behind the scenes. So it's good to reach out. So to summarize, essentially, through active tracking, I've boiled it down to three main things, which is collect the initial indicators from the sample you're starting with, pivot off of these domains to IPs and, and such, like I showed you earlier, and then profit. Once you've got the detection rules in place, you'll be able to see them when they're starting to do stuff in the future. And now you know if threat actor, you know the patterns of the behaviors, and you're kind of the expert, and now you can impress people. So when they get a new email in from the same threat actor, you can go, oh, I know this one, that's uh, blah, blah. And they'll be really impressed, hopefully, anyway. So yeah. So that's about it for today. I went through, it a bit, a quick, uh, went through it a bit fast, but if you want me to talk about any other details in uh, a bit more detail, then come and catch me later, or email me, or get me at my Twitter. Haven't tweeted anything, but that's how you can contact me. So thank you very much. <laughs> so questions?